Ammonia is a gas with covalently bonded molecules consisting of nitrogen and hydrogen atoms. Part A. Show the electron configuration of a nitrogen atom using electron in box diagrams. Label each subshell. The order for which subshells fill, or in the electron configuration how subshells fill, is 1s, 2s, 2p. Nitrogen's in group 5 and it's going to have the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So filling our orbitals, we'll have one, two electrons with opposite spin, that's the two half arrows going in opposite directions, and that's because electrons repel each other, so they're not going to go in the same direction, they're going to go in opposite directions. Our 2s2, and then we're going to have our 2p3, and how I filled this is using something called Hund's rule. And Hund's rule says that it's more stable to fill each orbital with one electron than it is to fill it with two. And that limits repulsion. To get the two marks for this question, you get a mark for having your correct subshells, so your 2s and 2p. And then you get a mark for correctly filling your subshells with your electrons. Part B. Ammonia can be made from the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen in the harbour process. N2 plus 3H2 with an equilibrium arrow and Fe catalyst at 450 degrees Celsius and 200 kilopascals creates 2NH3 and the enthalpy is minus 92 kilojoules per mole. What effect will increasing the temperature have on the composition of the equilibrium mixture and on the value of the equilibrium constant? Explain your answer. So firstly, we need to look at the effect on increasing temperature. So increasing temperature, we need to look at if the equilibrium is exo or endothermic in the forwards direction. And the forwards reaction is exothermic. We know this because our delta H or our enthalpy value is negative. If it was positive, it would be endothermic, but it's negative, so it's exothermic. And that means if we increase the temperature, the reaction is going to favour the backwards reaction or the endothermic direction. And if it's favouring the endothermic direction or the backwards direction, that means we're going to produce more N2 and H2. And if we produce more N2 and H2, that means that our value of the equilibrium constant will decrease. So here we've answered both parts of this question in one sentence. So it doesn't require a lot of writing to get both marks. So the reason why the equilibrium constant decreases is because the equilibrium constant will be Kc NH3 squared over N2 multiplied by H2 cubed. So if our N2 and our H2 are increasing, that is going to mean that our value of NH3 will be decreasing and so Kc will also decrease. To get the marks for this question, you get one mark for saying that the forward reaction is exothermic, so increasing temperature favours the backwards reaction. That gets you your first mark. And then your second mark comes from saying that more N2 and H2 will be produced, and so the value of the equilibrium constant will decrease. Part C. A chemist mixes together 0 0.450 moles of N2 with 0.45 moles of H2 in a sealed container. The mixture is heated and allowed to reach equilibrium. At equilibrium, the mixture contains 0 0.400 moles of N2 and the total pressure is 500 kilopascals. Calculate Kp. Show all your working. Include units in your answer. Firstly, let's write an expression for Kp. So Kp equals the partial pressure of NH3 squared divided by the partial pressure of N2 
multiplied by the partial pressure of H2 cubed. So what I've done, if we look at the equation or the equilibrium, I have taken the stoichiometry and I've raised that as the power. And we've got kind of products over reactants if we look at the forwards reaction. So then we need to work out the number of moles that we have at equilibrium. We've got the number of moles of N2 and the initial moles of N2 and H2. So we can work out the moles of equilibrium of H2 and NH3. So if we do an ice calculation, we have N2, H2, NH3. Our N2 initially will be 0 0.450 and so will our H2. And initially we will have no ammonia. Then the change, well, we know that we've got 0 0.400 moles of N2 at equilibrium, and that's a change of 0 0.050. Then we look at the stoichiometry. So for our H2, that will be minus 0 0.150, and that's 0 0.300. And then for ammonia, it will be the opposite change, but the same like ratio. So we'll have plus 0 0.100. So we get 0 0.100 moles. And this is all in moles. Then we need to work out the partial pressure. So partial pressure is the molar ratio multiplied by the total pressure. So if we start with working out the partial pressure of N2, so the partial pressure of NH2 is going to equal 0 0.400 divided by 0 0.800, that's our mole fraction, times by 500 because that is our total pressure, 500 kilojoules that equals 250 kilopascals. Then we're going to do the same for H2, and that equals 0 0.300 divided by 0 0.800 multiplied by 500, which gives us 187.5 kilopascals. And finally, the partial pressure of NH3 that is 0 0.100 divided by 0 0.800 multiplied by 500, and that gives us 62.5 kilopascals. So finally, working out Kp, we're going to plug these numbers into our expression for Kp. So that's 62.5 squared divided by 250 multiplied by 187.5 cubed which gives us 2.37 times 10 to the minus 6 kilopascals to the minus 2. How I worked out the units, well, we have kilopascals squared divided by kilopascals times kilopascals cubed. So that's kilopascals squared over kilopascals to the power of 4. So we can cancel the top and then cancel two from the bottom and that's one over kilopascals squared which is kilopascals to the minus two. So writing this in the answer line we have 2.37 times 10 to the minus six kilopascals to the minus two. To get the marks for this question you get a mark for working out the moles of H2 and NH3 in equilibrium. You get a mark for working out all the partial pressures correctly. You get a mark for plugging your partial pressures into a correct expression for Kp. And then you get a mark for finding 2.37 times 10 to the negative 6. And a mark for the correct units, so kilopascals to the negative 2. Part D. A chemical company receives an order to supply 1.96 times 10 to the 10 decimeters cubed of ammonia at room temperature and pressure. 
the harbour process produces a 95.0% yield. Calculate the mass of hydrogen in tonnes required to produce the ammonia. Give your answer to three significant figures. Firstly, let's highlight the key pieces of information. Our first key piece of information is that we produce 1.96 times 10 to the 10 decimeters cubed of ammonia at room temperature and pressure. And that the harbour process produces a 95% yield. We're asked to calculate the mass of hydrogen in tonnes required to produce the ammonia. And we need to give our answer to three significant figures. Because of the information, we know that we can use the equation number of moles equals the volume divided by the molar volume, which is 24 decimeters cubed, if the volume is decimeters cubed. So, using the volume that we've been given, we can do the number of moles of NH3 equals 1.96 times 10 to the 10 divided by 24 and that equals 8.167 times 10 to the 8 moles and then using the equation triangle of mass divided by moles times relative formula mass well then we can work out hydrogen after we've scaled the moles. So the equation is N2 plus 3H2 goes to NH3 or 2NH3. And we're looking for the moles of hydrogen. So scaling our moles, we would do 8.167 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2 multiplied by 3 and that equals 1.225 times 10 to the 9 moles. Using the equation triangle, well the relative formula mass of hydrogen is 1 times 2, which is 2. So then we do the moles, which is 1.225 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 2, and that equals 2.450 times 10 to the 9 grams. But we're asked for mass in tonnes, so we need to do 2.450 times 10 to the 9 divided by 1 times 10 to the 6, which is tonnes in grams. So that equals 2,450 tonnes of H2. And then finally we need to work out how much we need to get a 95% yield because this is if it was a 100% yield so we need slightly more and so working out the mass that we need for a 95% yield we do 2450 multiplied by 100 divide by 95 and that will give us 2580 tons which we can then write on the answer line 2580 and that is to three significant figures which is what the question has asked us to give our answer to to get the three marks for this question you get a mark for working out your moles of hydrogen which is your 1.225 times 10 to the 9 that's your moles of hydrogen and then you get a mark for working out the mass in tons of hydrogen so 2450 tons and then a mark for working out the mass in tons that you need for a 95 percent yield which is 2580 tons part e part one hydrazine n2h4 is used as a rocket fuel hydrazine can be prepared from the reaction of ammonia with sodium chlorate one there are two other products in the reaction write an equation for this reaction so firstly, let's write our reactants. We've got NH3 plus NaOCl. That's our sodium chlorate and our ammonia. And that's going to produce hydrazine, which is N2H4. We're also going to produce sodium chloride, or NaCl. And then our second product will be water, or H2O. 
Balancing this equation, we need two ammonias and then our equation is balanced. To get the mark for this question, you need to have the full correct balanced equation for this reaction. Part two, using the electron pair repulsion theory, draw a 3D diagram for a molecule of hydrazine. Predict the HNH bond angle around each nitrogen atom. Okay, firstly drawing the structure of hydrazine. We have N connected to an N or bonded to an N, and then we have two hydrogens attached to each nitrogen. So that will be like this. And then we're going to have a lone pair on each nitrogen. So looking at the electron pair geometry, well, we've got three bonding pairs attached to each nitrogen and one lone pair. So three bonded pairs, one lone pair. That means we're going to have pyramidal shapes and a pyramidal shape has a bond angle of 107 degrees. To get the marks for this question, you get a mark for drawing the correct structure of hydrazine, as I've drawn here, and then you get a mark for stating the correct bond angle of 107 degrees.